saying, God bless you and amen. Our family over here in the front, God bless you guys. So happy you're here today. Amen. Amen. Of course, our sister right there in the middle, she's been here a few times. Amen. Her friend right over there. Amen. God bless you guys. So happy you're with us in service once again. Amen. All of you here God's got something wonderful in store for his people today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to be hot. Amen. So it's going to be hot. Amen. This coming week. Amen. But uh, you want a cool place to stay on Wednesday? You come right here to the house of the Lord. I'm going to have that thing set on 70 degrees. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But praise the Lord. Strength and beauty, the Bible says, are found in his sanctuary. Amen. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. If you're here and you say, Brother William, I've got a prayer request. I'd like the church to be praying about it. You just make it known if you'd like. Go ahead. Uh, Tanya? Um, I have a friend from my household. Um, she's been having a lot of Slider's heart, isn't he? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands right now and bring these requests unto the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I ask you right now that the Holy Spirit would go right now, oh Lord God, to, to Louis. God, that you would get a hold of his heart, God. Bring him home, I pray, God. Deal with him, Lord God. God, about the condition of his soul, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for Tanya's request today, God. I pray that you would touch Brandon, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would just move in his life, move in that home, move in that family, I pray. And God, I pray, Lord, for those that are struggling, God, those that are hurting, God. You know the severity 
of many problems. Lord, I pray over the homes, Lord. I pray over those that are here today, God, that you would come right on in and just strengthen the homes, strengthen the marriages, strengthen the families, Lord God. And Lord, I ask you, Lord, that your peace, Lord, would overcome these people. Lord, I ask you, Lord God, that you would continue to touch those in this community. God, touch those hearts that are far from you, Lord. I pray for those that are addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, addicted to perversion. I pray, Lord, that you would deliver them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray, Lord, for everybody, God, that is sick in body. I pray for those that are hurting, Lord, that you would touch them and heal them and make them whole today, Lord. And oh God, we just give you all of the praise today and all of the glory because we know that you are a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And this time, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Wayne if he would come and he's going to take up the offering this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Always appreciate everyone's giving. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not a uh, denominational church. Amen. It's not under an organization. It is something that God started almost three years ago now. But that means that every single month, there's a bill to be paid. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what does your giving go towards? Bills, amen. Keeping the air cool in here, amen. Hallelujah. Keeping just everything going, amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you so much, Lord, for this time when we can come to you and the giving of our tithes and offering. And Lord, I ask you, Lord, that as we give unto you, God, that you would just bless this offering. Lord, that we would continue, Lord, to. Uh, Continue the work, God, that you have started within this house, Lord God, to, to preach the gospel to this community, Lord God. And Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you have blessed both the gift and the giver, Lord. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Here you go, Brother Wayne. Brother Wayne. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, mountain. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Psalm chapter number 23, starting in verse number one. So where is the book of Psalms? Well, you just go to the middle and you open it, you'll probably land in Psalms or Proverbs. Amen. You and Proverbs just keep going left and you'll make it. Amen. But Psalm chapter number 23 and verse number one. If you're there, say, I'm going through. Amen. I'm going through too. Praise the Lord. Psalm 23, starting in verse number 1, and it says this, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. With the help of the Holy Ghost this morning, I'd like to preach for a moment or two just upon the thought of I'm going through. Amen. Say that. I'm going through. Amen. Say it till you believe it. I'm going through. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, once again, we just come to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask you for the Holy Ghost anointing to bring forth your word to these precious, wonderful people today. <clears throat> I pray that it would not be me that is seen, Lord God, but that you are seen. I pray that it is not me that is heard, but it is the Holy Ghost that is heard in this place this morning. I pray against distraction from the inside of the outside. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I pray right now against the fowls of the air that would try to come and steal our minds, Lord, with the cares of this life, to steal our attention, Lord, from hearing what you have to say, God. You, Lord, desire to touch lives, to touch hearts, and to change lives. And God, I ask you, Lord, that our minds would be stayed upon you throughout this word today, God. I pray over the ears that they would be able to hear, the minds to understand, and, and the hearts to receive what you are saying, Lord. We just give you all of the praise and all of the glory today. In Jesus' name and the church said, amen. amen and amen. I'm going through. Amen. I'm going through. Not everything in life is going to work out just the way that you think it should. Amen. You believe that this morning? You experienced that this morning. Amen. Not everything in your life it's going to be picture perfect. Not everything going to work out just the way you think it should. If I were to stand up here and tell you that every day is going to be Friday and you're never going to have any trouble and, and this week it ain't going to be hot, you would know that I was up here lying. But I'm declaring to you what the Bible said. It rains upon the just and it rains upon the unjust. Can you say amen? You see, sometimes life just gets flat out. for you and I as children of God to fall into the trap of unreasonable expectation. We always expect the car to start, don't we? Until we turn that key and it don't want to start. Amen. Well, you see, we always depend that our tires will be full of air until you get up for work the next morning. You go out and it looks like your car is only on three wheels. Why? Because we have these unreasonable expectations that I've even fallen into this trap myself, being a pastor, having unreasonable expectation. You see, I've expected people to be faithful. Oh, that's an unreasonable expectation nowadays. I've expected people to be dependable. I've expected people that said they love me, not to hurt me. Oh, but those were all unreasonable expectations. Amen. You see, we do not live in a Sometimes you're going to endure disappointment. 
and trouble on all sides. But I'm here to tell you this morning, no matter what you are facing, no matter what you are going through, the Bible declares in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? Can you say amen? Life isn't always going to go the way you think it should.
through. Sometimes it's not easy to go through. Amen. Who in here has been to Balch Park before? You have? <laughs> Maybe one or two. Brother William, I've seen pictures of it. Oh, it looks so pretty. Beautiful. It's beautiful. You heard it out of her mouth. Let me tell you. I don't know if you went on the same road I was in, sis, but that was a scary road. I'm driving up there. It's a single car road. I barely like driving in town, let alone in the mountains. Single lane. I'm going up this mountain. And I'm thinking if a car is coming the other way, I'm going to fall off this cliff. And me and my family's going to die. Oh, I'll tell you, the devil start playing with your mind. Hey, you know what happened? We got up there. I think we drove 32 miles up to that mountain. And Joe was like, Daddy, I'm scared. He was sitting in the window seat overlooking the cliff. I said, son, don't you worry. As soon as I can, I'm going to turn this thing around and we're getting off of this mountain and going back to oil there where we belong. Amen. You know what happened? We let discouragement and a loss of confidence rob us from seeing the beauty of that place. Amen. And I believe God says the same thing to you and I. Many times God is saying, I'm bringing you up onto the mountain. It's a hard Discouragement is a difficult mountain to climb, but you must determine I will praise my way through it. Amen. I will worship my way through it. I will dance my way through it. I will pray my way through it. I will see the face of God. I will not let go of Him until He blesses me like He blessed Jacob. I pray that we would all leave here with a determination that Jacob had when he wrestled with an angel. He didn't know who and he said, tell me what your name is. Oh, yeah, the Bible said that Jacob let that place say, I've seen the face of God. Let me tell you, you can leave this place today of discouragement. And you can say, I've seen the face of God. I've seen God show up in my life. I've seen him come on the scene. I've seen him touch me. I've seen him heal me. I've seen him help me. I'm going through. Amen. Amen. I'm going through. Psalm 35, one of my favorite passages of Scripture. The latter end says, Weeping may endure for a night. That's it. Just a night. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 31, What shall we say then to these say? If God be for us, who can be against us? I like what Romans 8, 28 8 said. Oh my God. Oh, what is it? My brain is not wanting to work right now. Romans 8, 28. Oh, come on. Help me now. Help me now. Wait till after the message. I'll be getting quoted off the top of my head. Come on, y'all. Hell, <laughs> Romans 8, 28. Oh, what is it? All things work together for good. Come on now. Help me pray. Going through a valley of 
discouragement. Sadly and tragically, his family went looking for him one day. They found him dead from a gun wound, self-inflicted, in the office of his church. What was it? He got into that valley of discouragement. He lost all of his confidence in himself as a minister. He lost all of his confidence in the God that he proclaimed to know. Yeah. Then he lost all of his enthusiasm. What's the point of living anymore? Why should I even live? I'm worthless. I'm filthy. I'm nothing. I'm telling you, discouragement is evil. It'll take you further than you ever wanted to go. I'm talking about the valley of discouragement. But let me tell you, I've also known other men of God. I've known other men of God that have faced discouragement, but they kept walking and they made their way out of it. Because they kept their eyes on Jesus Christ. Can you lift your hands up unto the Lord today? Say, Lord, would you help me to keep my eye focused upon me? Quit looking about how big your problem is and start to begin to say how big your God is. Amen. Get your eyes off of the mountain and get your eyes upon the mountain mover. Amen. Get your eyes upon King Jesus. He will never fail. Hallelujah. So number one, you may be in a season of discouragement, but you've got to determine, I'm going to go through this thing. Can you say amen? Number two, I may be in the valley of the shadow of death, but I'm going through. Amen. Lift your hands up to the Lord. Say, I'm going through today. Sister Lorraine, and if you didn't know who she was, she was a very precious woman. She, she just, uh, she depended on you. That's what she did. She depended on everybody. Amen. She come into this place. She began to give orders. Amen. Brother William, it's too cold in here. Brother William, it's too hot in here. One time we went to pick her up. The kids are just being kids. They're just talking. I didn't think they were being loud. She said, Brother William, you need to keep your kids down. I said, you guys heard her. You guys hush up. Amen. I thought at the same time, I'm the one picking you up for church. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hey, some friends, can we can get on each other's nerves. That's okay. Amen. But, oh, Sister Lorraine was a, a precious, precious, godly woman. Oh, on Tuesday, oh, we got a call and from a woman and she said that Sister Lorraine was uh, oh, not doing too well and pretty soon she's going to be going home. Got that call at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Miranda and I dropped all the kids off other than baby Caden and we stayed at Memorial Hospital, or San Joaquin Hospital right by her bedside till 10, 15 at night. Whenever we got there, Sister Lorraine stretched out her hand towards Miranda and began to embrace her. She told Sister Miranda, honey, come really close to me. Lorraine's got a few hours to live. Oh, Miranda gets up close to Sister Lorraine. Sister Lorraine pulls Miranda almost up on that bed and hugs her and puts her hand on her head and says, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over my pastor's wife. I pray that you would bless her. I pray that you would help her. I pray that you would heal her. I pray that you would minister to imagine what I started doing whenever I saw a precious saint who's about to leave this earth. One of the last things on her mind is to give us a blessed amen. Declare the blessing of the Lord upon our life. Oh yes, church. Then she 
She started doing this. She had this ventilator on her face, helping her to breathe this mask, breathe the life in her. You know what she was doing after she prayed for us? Prayed for Miranda and told me she loved me. She started trying to take that thing off. Taking it off. We said, no, 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 honey. You put that back on. You no, know she said, I want to go home. I want to go home. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands up to the king? I'm telling you, you can even face death with the help of God. There was no fear in her eye. There was no torment. There was no fear. Why? She knew in who she had believed. Amen. Oh, yes. A few times. She took that ventilator off her oxygen. With the ventilator, it was on a low 90. Or well, 92 is low. Her oxygen. As soon as they took that thing off of her, that oxygen just dropped down to the low 80s. And I thought, Lord, this is going quick. Then it got into the 70s. Then it got into the 60s. This is all in a matter of, you know, 30 minutes or so. I'm holding her hand. Sometimes she look at me whisper. She'd lay there and pray for me, Pastor. She began to just shake. Different parts of her body. She was about to leave. She, she said, pray for me. I said, Sister Lorraine, do you see him yet? I said, there's Jesus. And he's coming for you. I said, she said, is there church tonight? I said, yes, and you're going to church tonight. Hallelujah.
Bible says a broken, a contrite heart I will not despise. That's what God's looking for. With every head bowed, all the eyes goes, Brother Randy, would you come up and thank you? Oh, Jesus. Just bow your heads. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Oh, Jesus, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Deal with every heart. Every heart, God. Every heart, Jesus. You can make it through this time of discouragement. You can make it through the valley of the shadow of death and not have to fear any evil because God will be with you. Are you here today and you say, Brother William, I'm not a child of God and I know it. And you're ready to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, to let Him be the Lord, the Master, and the Ruler of your life. If that's you, would you just make up your way here?